Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to Fiban Morning Talks. Fiban Morning Talks is a series taking place once a month where an industry expert or a business angel joins us to share their knowledge on topics related to angel investing. Today, this topic is uh, the art of uh, asking questions that lead to growth. Uh, we're delighted to have Elena Kovamäki join us here today to share her uh, insights and tips on asking the right questions that in a way that engages fruitful conversations and that uh, guides your portfolio startups to focus on uh, to focus towards common uh, uh, targets. Elina is a FIBA angel investor, speaker, legal ex- and a legal expert. She specializes in uh, legal issues related to sales, marketing, social media, communication, copyright, and uh, data protection. Elina, warmly welcome, and it's great to have you with us here. Thank you, and good morning, everyone behind the screens. Yes. So uh, we go through the program now. So we start at 8.30. At 8.35, we'll start the discussion with Elina. Uh, before that, we will have a little intera- interactive session. And then at 9 sharp, we will start the Q&A session where you can direct your questions to Elina. The questions are related to the topic, today's topic. And we will end the event at uh, 9.15. But hey, let's get started. So for the interactive session, Grab your devices, mobile phone, laptop, or tablet, and go open a browser and go to www.menti.com. Now, once you open the website, it will ask you for a login code, which you can see in the screen above, which is 40001746. So again, you can see that code above in the shared screen. Once you log in, you can answer the question. And today's question is, what are the elements of a good question? So we will uh, wait a minute or two for your inputs. And in the meanwhile, uh, Elena, uh, could you tell us briefly about your background and uh, how did you become interested in today's topic? Yes, certainly. So my name is Elena Koivumäki and uh, my background, well, let's say we can start from the year 2000 when I graduated from Helsinki University to become a lawyer. And I was specialized in IPRs, Mm -hmm. intellectual property rights. And then I joined uh, one small boutique IB, IPR law firm in Helsinki yep. to write my master thesis in 1999. And then I stayed there for 17 years right. in the law firm world. So mm-hmm. um, until 2016, I was working in, in, in law firms in Helsinki. I was 14 years a partner there. And then in 2016, I made a big decision to change to change and I quit quit my job and I left okay. my partnership in Evershed Sutherland. And when I left, mm-hmm. we had 170 people working here in Finland. Okay. Then I started my own company, Lexperience in 2016, mm-hmm. and I continued to work as a legal advisor, but I also broadened my work to, to more like also uh, being more a speaker, a moderator, a host of events. Mm-hmm. And then I also started Angel Investments in that same year, 2016. So I wanted to sort of broaden a little bit what I do and, uh, and uh, not just be just a lawyer mm-hmm. anymore. And what made me interested in in this topic, um, as a legal professional, argumentation skills have been a crucial part of my work for now 21 years. It has been very rewarding to learn how to become better in argumentation Mm -hmm. and communication in general. And I have been in many, many different advisory boards and boards in companies Mm -hmm. and different associations during the last decades and I have had a big joy and privilege there to learn from some of the best industry experts so I've been like listening very carefully how they how they communicate for example in the board work also uh, on the negative point of view how did I become interested in this topic Uh, we did some HR 360 assessments in our uh, in our work uh, yeah. in our office and i personally also received some negative feedback from my colleagues and okay. and, and peers saying that sometimes elena you talk too much and you listen to little mm, okay. and that sort of opened my eyes and it mm. was super useful to get that feedback and that made me more conscious about how i communicate how I ask questions, and especially how I listen after I asking the question. Yeah. 
In addition, um, I noticed something very interesting throughout the years, especially when traveling uh, business, uh, business related travels and meeting new people. I've made a conscious decision to steer the conversations quite quickly also to uh, from the business topics also to more personal topics mm -hmm. and guess what i've learned well people's eyes sort of light up when you ask something about their personal yeah. life as well in in addition okay. to what they do for work yeah, yeah. so it's it has it has made me realize how important it is to be really interested in the person mm. as well yeah. in addition to their like work tasks and, and prof professional side. And lastly, but not least, um, I want to thank two people who are very important and who have strongly affected me in becoming interested in this topic of mm -hmm. our asking questions. And uh, I have learned a lot from these two people. And they are uh, Vesa Ristikangas, executive coach from Boomentis Coaching House. Mm -hmm. I have now been three years in this uh, trusted advisors coaching uh, uh, coaching group with with him he led, led by him mm -hmm. and also Maretta Tukiainen another coach with whom I've had wonderful one-to-one -one coaching sessions uh, sessions throughout the years Vesa and Maretta they, they have really raised my interest and understanding about this topic okay that's great that's great to hear <laughs> thank you for sharing that yeah uh, we have some uh, uh, answers from the audience so what are the elements of a good question? So we have purposeful, uh, knowing the audience, listening, open-ended questions, and relevance. Okay, do, you, do these get, get you any thoughts on the, on the topic? Definitely. I really like that, that, that you, somebody already posted this, like listening and open-ended mm -hmm. questions, yeah. which is the topic today. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, but uh, open-ended questions, that's an interesting one. What do you think are the benefits of uh, open-ended questions? I think the benefits are very strong. Mm -hmm. One thing we all tend to do way too much is to make assumptions and interpretations mm -hmm. way too early. Yeah. And that yeah. is actually a big problem, not only in work life, but also in our private lives as well, mm -hmm. when, we, when we stop to think about it. Yeah, true. So we basically, we want to hear what we want to hear, and mm -hmm. then we make an assumption mm -hmm. very, very early. Very common, yeah. Yeah, so when you make open-ended open questions, you really leave the room for the other one to give you insight, to, to share what they want to share instead of, Mm -hmm. answering to your closed-ended and leading question mm -hmm. yeah. so if it when you you are more like to, likely to get an answer what you did not see coming when you ask an open-ended question so mm -hmm. i think that sort of leaves room for much more interesting and and mm -hmm. usually also more like useful yeah. uh, answers uh, and answers and also uh then you sort of allow the other person to broaden the answer to the areas where they want. And sometimes, and quite often, they actually bring up something that you really didn't see coming, mm, which, which you probably didn't get if you asked a very, very leading question. Mm. And as a lawyer, I must say, we are by profession sort of trained to ask also mm. leading questions, yeah. <laughs> especially when we go to like court or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been also a bit of a struggle for myself to stop using those leading questions. I see. Yeah, yeah. But you, you get the, you know, the both sides, the open and mm -hmm. the leading one. So yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> How about, are there any uh, downsides or to uh, open-ended questions? Well, the downsides are that sometimes people uh, uh, tend to be afraid mm -hmm. of asking open-ended questions, especially mm -hmm. in the professional environment, because they tend to think that it makes them look sort of weak or ignorant. Mm, if I, I if I op if I ask a very open question, the other party might think that ah, oh, doesn't he he or she know like anything about this when yeah. when he formulates the question like that? But that fear is is unnecessary, uh, based on studies. Um, which have been made is that actually when you ask an open-ended question, you give more power mm -hmm. uh, to the other one and you get more insight yeah. from, from them. And in addition, you actually create a so-called psychological safety to that yeah. discussion. Yeah. So you sort of, sort of show the other that you don't have to give, uh, you don't have to ask very detailed questions and sort of show your own knowledge mm -hmm. and like, 
I don't know what's the word in English, like be the better person in yeah. the, or the more knowledgeable person in the discussion, but you sort of allow the other person to shine and, and, and share what they, what they think about that topic. Yeah. Also from the time usage point of view, sometimes, of course, with open-ended questions, somebody might just start talking for 30 mm. minutes or so. Yeah. So then, of course, at some point, the person asking the question might have to step in and stop and sort of steer the, steer the conversation and uh, take care of the schedule as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, about the uh, psychological safety, that was an interesting one. So how can uh, angel investors and founders promote this kind of culture and culture of asking questions in teams or in syndicates? Of course, firstly, by showing example, mm. asking questions themselves as well, sort of showing that it's okay, okay to ask and also uh, like speaking, communicating that it's, that it's perfectly okay to ask any types of questions, mm. that there really are no such thing as, as stupid questions. Yeah. For example, I'm an angel investor at Kyra Distillery Company and just we had our uh, AGM one day our annual general meeting and in the financial report part there were some some like uh, uh, like uh, short shortened uh, shortened versions of some terms which i didn't know yeah. and of course i first thought oh can i sort of uh, like raise up my hand in the yeah, teams yeah. and say sorry i don't understand what that means but mm. now like for many years ago i already decided that yes i can and i will and i won't yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't make me stupid that that i admit that i'm not familiar with that that what that means and often i've noticed that when i do ask these sort of stupid questions mm. that somebody might think that oh she should know what this means it usually opens up a very interesting question mm -hmm. where uh, a discussion where yeah. you actually realize that the others might not not have understood that either and then yeah. they are sort of relieved that somebody raised up that hey what does this mean yeah 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 so so that that's what i really mean by like mm. showing real examples also um what i think we finish people do a little bit too less a uh, little is that when we start a new group or let's say you you go and uh, uh, you you are gonna invest in a company and you meet with the leaders yeah. uh, we don't tend to talk so much about how do we want to communicate sort of mm -hmm. set the rules create the rules I see. within yeah. each other in that group and also that way we can build the trust together when I started this trusted advisor um, mm -hmm. coaching three years ago, the first evening that was four hours long, I think we spent like three hours, wow. just six people, only talking about how can we create trust amongst mm -hmm. us when we are new to each other and we are starting a very sort of personal journey for three years. Yeah. So I don't think that's very common <laughs> that you would spend three hours yeah. talking how to build trust within this group. What are our rules for communicating? Yeah, so, but it makes sense because that three-year journey—that's a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and and you have to have trust in order to speak those uh, confidential and sort of personal matters that we that we do there. And also, the last thing I want to point out in this is if there are some elephants in the room, mm. which there more or less are in every room sometimes, yeah. you should really address those at some point because if there are some issues that everybody is aware of but they are not addressed they take up so much of everybody's energy that it sort of ties the energy to yeah. that elephant in the room so we should have more courage to bring those topics up uh, transparently and, and and speak about yeah. them as well yeah okay sounds good yeah then another question is uh, how can angel investors use open-ended questions when evaluating new investments and do you have any examples of that Yes, I have some, we were thinking about some uh, practical uh, like examples, what, what, what actually you can ask in, when you are evaluating a company. So for example, you could ask if, if, a, if a CEO has explaining, giving you a pitch and explaining what are their plans, etc. You might ask, for example, how what you just described affects the business mm -hmm. or the plan or the value development of the company. So then it's quite open that you just ask, how will this affect the value creation of the company? And then you be silent yeah. and listen and listen and listen to what they say. And also mm -hmm. I've noticed that when they answer the first questions, 
we very often tend to then jump in with the second leading question, but then we should try to stop ourselves and again think, how can I continue with another open-ended question? Mm -hmm because I, I really encourage, and at the end of this discussion, I have some homework for everybody nice. <laughs> to, to, to really try even just, you can start today. And also um, startups, they of course tend to be in constant change as we know. And it's a good idea to find out how resilient to change the, the leaders and the owners of the startups are. Yeah. And one could ask an open-ended question, for example, in what kind of transformation situations you yourself have been in and what did you learn from them? Mm. Yeah. I think it's a very much more useful formulation of a question than to ask how resilient are you to change? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and also in addition to asking questions about the potential portfolio company and the team, I would also ask uh, advice to ask a question, what do you expect from me? Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure how many angel investors or whatever, like potential new uh, CEOs, or, uh, how often they do actually ask, what do you expect from me? Yeah. And the last exa example of an open-ended question to potential portfolio companies could be, for example, what matters connect us and bring mm -hmm. us more to the same table? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we sort That's of good. try to find out what makes them tick, what motivates yeah. them and Am I like a similar, do I have similar agenda and, 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 uh, and values, yeah. et cetera? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's say everything went well with the evaluating the investment, the investment was done. After a few years, uh, how about, how can angel investors uh, uh, use open-ended questions when they're supporting their portfolio startups? Yeah, are there any examples of like good uh, questions that would engage in uh, fruitful conversations? Firstly, I think it's a super important question and I think it's a really, really good topic, not just, you know, make the investment and sort of leave the money there, but how yeah. can you actually support the company throughout the years when you are, you are investing in them. And uh, one thing that I've learned also through a little bit through the hard way is that leadership is not about uh, uh, giving ready answers. Leadership mm -hmm. is, is truly about teaching and developing the other person's thinking. So how could the angel use such questions that helps the other, the, t the leaders in the, in the company, yeah. uh, uh, in their work and in the discussion at hand? And one practical example or, or thought would be how to use more uh, the word we. Mm -hmm. So let's say I call to Pura Distillery CEO Mika. I never ask hey, what new products will you be making there in Isokura next year? I always yeah. ask, hey, what's, what's like cooking for us next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the water, yeah, the yeah, team. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so that also uh, sort of shows that you are actually like part of the team, even though mm. you are not operationally working there every day, yeah. every day. So, so just to sort of a, a, a word advice as well. Yeah. And also, the, the angels, of course, should promote a culture where asking questions from them also mm -hmm. is, is, is allowed and, and also like hoped for. Yeah. <laughs> they will really uh, pick up the phone and, and call you. And, uh, and then another interesting topic about this supporting the, the startups is, I think, the roles of the, the leaders and the owners. It's quite common, I think, that CEOs didn't choose to become CEOs. Mm. They started up the company, so they sort of accepted that, okay, I will lead the company for the first few years. But they might not be like CEOs in their heart yeah. or want to do that work as all, at all. So one example how to ask about that issue, the role issue, could mm -hmm. be asking which role would you like to strengthen yeah. and which role would you like to de decrease? Mm -hmm. I see, yeah. yeah. Instead of asking would you like to step down as a CEO? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the difference. <laughs> yes. I, see, I totally see the difference. Yeah. So I think the, the first one creates a more fru fruitful <laughs> yeah. feeling for really sort of sharing the CEO's thoughts yeah. on, 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 on which roles he would like to strengthen, which would be best for the company. And lastly, on this topic about supporting the portfolio companies, I would like to raise up this mm -hmm. uh, sort of pillar model, model, which is created by Vesaristik Angas, uh, from Boomant, this coaching house, and it, it can be uh, uh, read, also read from his book, uh, Valmentava Johtajuus, 
uh, like coaching leadership from 2010, which is like a six stage model for asking open ended mm. questions and supporting yeah. uh, the, the portfolio company. And we can quickly go through these six stages. So, so first stage is uh, defining the current moment, mm -hmm. defining the focus and goals, asking what would you like to achieve? Where are we today? Mm -hmm. So that's a very open question. Second one, what are the possibilities of this company? What is an ideal end result if everything goes well? And then we could ask, what, would you, uh, 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 what are the options in getting to those goals? And which ones of those options seem best at the moment and why? Mm. Yeah. Third stage is planning the actions. Mm -hmm. What should you do first as a CEO? Second, third. What is the most critical in terms of succeeding in this plan? Mm -hmm. Fourth one, overcoming obstacles. What makes you hesitate this plan? What could prevent you from succeeding in it? Mm -hmm. And the last one, rewards and support. What type of help you desire and from who? I see. Okay. And lastly, stage three is repetition. Then you repeat again everything. You said your plan was this, timetable was this, mm -hmm. like obstacles were this. Where do you, what do you do first thing after this meeting? Yeah. And I think that's a very nice, good model for open-ended questions and, and, and supporting the portfolio company. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> sounds very good. Yeah. All right. Then uh, one more question about, um, so how does nonverbal communication play a role in this whole uh, open questions and the culture of uh, asking questions, and especially in the online world, because that's what we're living right now. Yes, and it's super crucial, especially in the online world. Yeah. Harvard Business Review, I, 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 I check the numbers here, have studied, of course, a lot about this uh, nonverbal mm. communication, and it's only 7% of the words we use, mm. what we speak, yeah. is, is how we sort of take that in 38 yeah. percent is how we say the words and what mm. sounds we make okay and the rest 55 percent is the nonverbal and body language okay. which is yeah. huge definitely <laughs> definitely it is. and and when we go to the online environment mm. and when we remove the physical component yeah. uh, from 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 our presentation and speech our voices actually carry a much larger uh, load so a monotone, unclear, hard to hear voice is magnified in virtual world. <laughs> so we really should pay attention even more in those Teams meetings and mm -hmm. Zoom meetings, how we speak, how, how, we, how we also, what our body, body language looks like. In another Harvard Business Review uh, study, it shows that 65% uh, of people in any online meetings do other work at the same time. 63% send emails, 55% eat at the same time. Yeah. So you really should pay attention how to engage, engage uh, the person you are having the, the online meeting with. And mm -hmm. lastly, but not least, do, do you know how quickly a person makes a first impression of a new person? Not sure, but I heard it's very fast. <laughs> Princeton University conducted a study on this issue. In one-tenth of a second, okay. one-tenth of a second, we make the first impression of another person. Yeah. So when you open that Teams or Zoom or whatever, mm. you should be at your best in the very first second <laughs> when, when, the, when the line is opened. Yeah. So you can build a lot of psychological safety also in the mm. online environment with your body language and how you speak and how you, how you, what, your, what your facial expressions are. And I do advise people to keep the cameras on, <laughs> not switch them off. Yeah. All right, that's good. That's great. Yeah, I'm maybe investing in a light or something. So it helps. exactly, yeah, good lighting. That's yeah. true. All right. Um, then you mentioned about the six stages of uh, how to create uh, open-ended questions. Do you have any other steps or tips on that uh, one should take uh, into notice when creating open-ended questions? Yeah, a few practical examples. Again, is firstly you should always decide with what word do you start your open-ended question. Hmm. Do you start it by what, when, who, or why? Yeah. But I left the why as the last one, because 
use the word why with caution, mm -hmm. it can easily be seen accusing. Okay. Why have you decided to go this way? Yeah. Instead of sort of, sort of uh, asking like, uh, 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 what affected your decision making back in two thousand and eighteen mm -hmm. when you when you make these decisions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, there's a difference. There's a difference in the, yeah. in the sort of feeling. The, yeah. And, and especially how you then present that why question. Yeah. Also, use short questions. Mm -hmm. They are often more most powerful ones. Mm -hmm. Like, Vasim, what's on top of your mind today? And then yeah. you listen. Yeah. Short, very powerful, and you might get something that you really couldn't get with a closed-ended question. And lastly, I would advise to take advantage of the so-called momentum moments, mm -hmm. which is always the beginning and the end of any conversation. That's where you get the most um, sort of uh, uh, the engagement rate is, is the mm, largest yeah. from, the, from the person you are speaking with. So use those parts, the beginning and the end, to ask those powerful open-ended questions okay. would be my practical tip. All right. That's awesome. Thank you. Then. Um... Uh, yeah, so how to practice asking these powerful questions? Do you have any example or something? This was a nice task to think, like mm. this homework for, for everybody behind the screens. And I really encourage you to start today <laughs> in your home, with your spouse, with your friends, with your children, with your mm. colleagues, etc., etc. But before giving those tips, I would ask everybody to memorize a minute, memorize a feedback which you have sometimes received that made a true impact on you. Why did that feedback that you got make an impact on you? Why was that feedback so powerful? And you think about those moments when you, when you have received such a, such a feedback, there is something important in that moment and in that question and in that feedback that you got. And then I would ask everybody to, to consider creating those open questions around the word impact. For example, if we decide on this matter, let's say we are, I'm negotiating an investment deal. Okay. Then I ask the CEO of the company. If we decide on this, uh, uh, this uh, shareholder agreement term, this mm -hmm. matter, with option A instead of option B, what is the impact on you and the company? Mm, I see. For example, if somebody tries to get me to sign something that I don't like yeah. as an investor, I could ask, do you understand if I accept this term, which I really don't like and I don't agree with it, what is the impact? on me, mm. for example, to my motivation or, or yeah. support or something. So when, mm. you, when you ask questions using the word impact, what is the impact? You, you start to get, I think, really interesting answers to them. Yes, definitely. Also, if you want to find out the person's commitment level, you could ask, mm. what increases your commitment and what decreases it? What, which choices you have to make in order to become even more committed to this startup. Hmm. Yeah. Then you make the other person sort of think and, and realize that, for example, okay, I have my secondary job or, or mm -hmm. a hobby that takes up huge amount of my time. Should I be doing that so much if I want to fully be in this startup now for three years, for yeah. example? And if you want to find out the person's motivation levels, you could ask, in which matters you know your words and your actions differ from each other? What do you then do in practice instead of what you promised to do? Mm, yeah. It's a tough one to it answer is. also. Like, yeah. then you have to admit that sometimes, okay, within these topics, I tend to promise something which I then don't deliver. Mm. But a very interesting question. And then lastly, but definitely not least in, in, in this uh, question is a super important lesson and a homework to everybody. We tend to not listen enough, like really listen enough. Mm -hmm. And we tend to make those interpretations and assumptions way too early. Uh, and uh, then um, the following method, which I 
end up with is a, uh, is from a so-called non-violent communication process mm -hmm. and it teaches us how to communicate any request we want to make yeah. in a better way that most of us do in our everyday lives yeah. it has four different uh, parts yeah. for four tips and first one is do not make those interpretations mm -hmm. instead make observations example interpretation there must be something wrong as the CEO doesn't send me the reports. Mm -hmm. There was an interpretation already. Yeah. I'm thinking there's something wrong that I'm not getting those reports. The correct way would be, the better way would be just making an observa observation. I am not getting the reports I want. Fact. Yeah. Observation. Second point from the four points. Usually we tend to make thoughts mm -hmm. when we should actually think about our feelings, how we feel. So the thought would be, the CEO must be hiding something on purpose, right? Yeah. Mm. Quite often we think like that. Could be, yep. Mm. And the better way would be, I feel discomfort and distrust mm. yeah. for not getting those reports. That's how I feel. Yeah. Point three from four. Usually we then make a request to another person. We say, would you send me the reports, CEO, please? Mm. The better way would be, thinking about what is the actual need inside of us. I need transparency and cooperation in order to maintain trust amongst us and to give my 100% support. I need to feel included in the inner circle with full access. Then you sort of explain to yourself and the other, what is the need behind mm -hmm. your sort of feeling of discomfort and distrust. Yeah. Trust. And the last one, we tend to make then a demand. Our request for the report didn't help. So then we say, send me the reports or else. Yeah. When the better way and my last tip would be making a request. What would be the best way to keep me informed of the reports? Yeah. See the difference? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that, that was a good way to put it because you, you can really see the difference there with yes. the tone and the feeling and how yeah, it comes out. I yeah. think so too. So with those tips, mm. I would like to... And my part of yeah. this discussion, I hope you you got got some useful useful thoughts and thinking. And I really wish that everybody behind the screens would make a homework, let's say even today, yeah. and uh, and make some open ended questions. Definitely yeah. hope so. Yes, <laughs> fine. Thank you very much. That was great. We got some great tips there, great insights, and I will at least be doing the homework for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes. But uh, now we can move on to the Q and A session. So everyone back in the audience. So we go back to Menti. It was the same as before. So grab a device, open a browser, go to www.menti.com and it will ask you to log in and you can see it's the same code. So 40001746, which is displayed on the screen above. Uh, but yes, so if you have any questions relative to the topic that we discussed today and the uh, stuff that um, uh, Elena brought out. So please feel, feel free to send your questions so we can see them on the screen and we can get to answer those. And while, while uh, the questions are coming, I'm, I can share one, one story yes. uh, still, uh, how I actually made one kindergarten teacher cry, like happy tears, okay. when yeah. I started using this, this, uh, these um, um, uh, ways to communicate, mm. is that we also got this homework from our trusted advisors. Uh, uh, coaching sessions that we should uh, give feedback with around the topic of impact and yeah. tell somebody how their work impacts our life. And mm -hmm. then there was a really, really, really wonderful kindergarten garden teacher. And then I went to the to pick up my son. And then I told her that, hey, by the way, that do you know that that uh, that the children really, really like you and you are you are you are, you are so empathetic and sort of. Mm -hmm you can feel the good energy that that your work here every day with our children makes us feel so safe and happy in our work work mm -hmm. days when we know that our children are sort of safe and and they are within the best hands and etc so i i formulated it in a way how it impacts the parents mm -hmm. every day of, of how good she is yeah. and she started to cry immediately there in yeah. the kindergarten yard and I was like whoa this is powerful <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call powerful questions exactly and yeah. giving feedback in a powerful way yeah. correct <laughs> wow okay <laughs> yeah try yeah. 
<laughs> need to try that. Yeah. Need to that. yeah. <laughs> Tell that to your spouse or significant others. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Will do. Okay, we already have some questions from the audience. So first we have, um, what would be a good open-ended questions to angel investors to know if they are really interested and ready to invest? Hmm. Yeah, so from the other point of view, how could the, the company yeah, communicate to the angel, yeah. angel investors? Um, um, I think one could be sort of to find out in general, what is their sort of investment uh, uh, style or, or mm. goal this year? Like you could ask, like, what, what is your plan for mm. your angel investments this year, for example? That yeah. then that way the person would, for example, I get a lot of contacts, of course, from, from startups asking me to, me to invest. And uh, mm. quite often I, I transparently tell them that for, for this year, my angel events investments are done. I will not make any more. And then it's sort of very easy to for them to understand. Mm. So that could be something to start start with, for example. All right. Then uh, second question is how to learn from experience. How you notice when you have done a good or bad question? Hmm. Very good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I have learned, especially. Uh, like avoiding those why questions mm. is because when you ask those why questions, you often notice that the other party feels sort of accused. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you get the best answer in that way. So um, I think you sort of feel that the vibe in the room yeah. or in, even in the online, online discussion mm. that your question itself made the other feel discomfort. And we should always try to increase the, the psychological safety mm -hmm. and trust mm -hmm. in any conversation. And uh, yeah, you just sort of get the feeling, I think. Yeah. All right. When you start paying attention to your own questions and how the other party reacts to them. Yeah, of course. Of course. All right. Then third one was uh, good talk. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what are your favorite questions when evaluating motivation, teamwork, ambition, level, real traction mm. of a startup team mm. i think uh, yeah i i tend to of, o, often ask about sort of the also the the team's future goals in their lives mm. trying to sort of dig out how motivated they are to be yeah. in this company for how long and what makes them stay here <laughs> okay, I see. so yeah. so in in that way uh, which i had the the example earlier yeah, yeah. is about the roles for example which yeah. role you, you don't even have to ask which role in this company would you like to strengthen? I advise to asking very open question, mm. which role in your life, in your work life, you would like to strengthen and which you would like to decrease. And thereby the person could, for example, reveal to you that mm. they wish to do something else in two years, like increase their artistic something, what they do as a hobby, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that question will make them think for sure. Yes, and I think this role question is quite quite interesting. Yeah. And not just asking in which role would you want to be, but instead of which would you like to strengthen, which would you like to lower? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Then we have a fourth one. So I like the idea that feedback is given in the form of a question. However, is there a risk that the message is left unclear? Hmm. There might be a risk, of course. Yeah, and I'm not saying um, that all feedback should be given in a form of a question, um, uh, in a question. And also sometimes we get, I don't know, what's the word in English? Uh, people tend to use this feedback method when they first give something good, then mm. bad, and then good. This sort mm. of hamburger style. Yeah, the sandwich. A sandwich, yeah. sandwich yeah. style. But I believe that current studies and what I have also learned from my coaching sessions is that it's not so advisable to use that. It, it mm. gives mixed messages to the person. So you should clearly give that feedback that you are given, giving, whether mm. it's good or bad. You should sort of keep them separate from each other and not try to hide the bad one between yeah. the good ones. So in that way, I think we all have a lot to learn still mm. from, from a truly transparent uh, communication and how to give feedback. And I, I must admit, even though I've been practicing it for three years now with mm. the best coaches, it's not easy. But I've learned, I've noticed, it's nice to notice in my everyday life when I interact with people, I notice that, hey, huh, 
I was again using the open ended questions and like giving feedback in this way. It sort of sinks in after a few years. <laughs> yeah, of course, it takes time. But it There's takes time. It's practicing. Yeah, and, yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Uh, then we have a fifth question. So, if you've asked the question that decreased the psychological safety, mm. how to correct that situation? Any mm. open ended questions that would help in that situation? Yeah. Uh, very important question is, is how to steer that car back to the lane if it's yeah. it, if it sort of went to the side super good question also in this i think we should be more transparent in in addressing that elephant in the room that we sort of went to a discomfortable area how could we come back from there mm. so why not even say that that okay that the so sort of I formulated my question in a bit of an odd way I apologize yeah. and I would like to you know uh, in, increase the trust between us back to where it was and may I formulate my question again yeah. how would you make it feel if I said something to you like this when I ask a super, for example a question that made you feel uncomfortable and then I would say this yeah it would make you better yeah it, yeah you would be more open to sort of take me back yeah exactly yeah, I would, yeah it would yeah I would see that you're trying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So I think we are way too little discussing this, discussing the, the 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 topic of of how to communicate, how to how can, could we build trust, what makes us uh, yeah. sort of become more closer to each other. Yeah. All right. And I was happy. I have to say, Nordic Business Forum mm -hmm. two years ago, when it last last time it was, and three years ago. Many of the big CEOs from the United States, the huge mm. like corporate uh, corporate uh, executives, were all talking about emotions, feelings, how to take those into account in in the everyday work. And I was sitting there in the front row, like, oh yes, finally, finally, mm. they are talking about emotions and feelings and how how important they are in addition to those pure facts. And mm. just money and dang dang dang. So yeah, because we're people after e all. And exactly. That's what drives us. Yes, yeah. that is. And we can get so much more out of the conversation or the negotiation when we understand that that it's a real person that we are speaking with. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, we have two more questions. So uh investors start with the question: where are you from? They think probably it is a good small talk mm. question, but if they don't get an answer, even if explained why that personal question is irrelevant, mm. they stop there and ask, How can I trust you? Hmm. Hmm. So if a person would not like to give an answer to a question, where are you from? Then um, first of all, I would go inside myself and think, why do I not want to give this answer? Mm. Like I showed the four tips at the end. Yeah. What is the feeling? Why does this question make me feel mm. somehow discomfort? What is my need behind that feeling? Yeah. Why do I not want to answer to that? That would be a good idea to sort of mm. first make clear for yourself. Yeah. And, and then maybe think of another way or another type of response mm. that would satisfy the person asking it. And it would still leave you quite comfortable. Yeah. So I think I would then try to make up some sort of another type of answer which I would give every time when I was asked this for example all right then last question is book or podcast recommendations in this area oh so many but I have to say that having been now three years with Vesa Ristikangas like many 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 long evenings in our coaching sessions mm. that I would I would recommend his books a lot yeah. <laughs> on this topic he's he's he has truly changed my way of thinking yeah my way of thinking, for example, and uh, also, also for example, Harvard Business Review has quite many uh, interesting articles and blogs about these power questions and uh, and open-ended questions. If you want to sort of just take a shorter shorter tips on that, but I could actually, I can then, um, I can even uh, like post on the Fiban, for example, yeah. the Facebook page, some more. Okay. Uh, tips. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Reading and listening and yeah. watching tips. Yeah. All right. That would be great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, then we have one more question to the audience, which is what topics would you like to learn more about? So when we're thinking of our next uh, sessions, we would like to see what topics interest you. So we would love your feedback to take into consideration. And Elena, I would like to ask you as well, what topics 
would you like to learn more about? Oi, oi, oi. That's a tough one. <laughs> With an open-ended question, you might get a very long answer yeah. from me because I love to learn and I think I'm still at a very early stage in my angel invest investor career after five years. And I think I've been in like seven companies uh, mm -hmm. up until now. Um, I think for myself, I would like to learn more about sort of the phases of a startup. Mm. I don't think I personally know enough of that sort of yesterday. I had a very interesting conversation with, with one group where we talked about in after how many years, usually the CEO should change in a startup. And there was very fruitful information about when, in what size companies usually you have to make that change. So that sort of, that would, be very interesting to me to learn more are there any common mm -hmm. common features that you know that when you hit that 30 people level and da, 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 it's time to change the ceo yeah. for example okay interesting thanks for the feedback <laughs> yes well okay time is up already uh thank you very much elena for being here and sharing your insights and tips it was great hearing we learned a lot and thank you everyone the audience for attending today uh hope to see you again and everyone have an awesome day Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>